Hello and welcome back to more Vintage Cube. We got a lot of good things in this pack. Demonic Tutor, uh, Tinker, Badlands, Chandra is quite nice, and then the rest is just okay. Um, I think it's really for this pack between Demonic Tutor and Tinker. Tinker is really good to take early, especially with Bolas' Citadel existing. I think the, the Tinker Bolas' Citadel deck is the strongest deck you can draft, as far as I'm aware. A aside from getting like infinite power, but like... If you get infinite power in the Tinker deck, you can just turn one win fairly consistently, especially with Mana Crypt. You just play Mana Crypt, Island, Tinker, Bolas, Citadel, Storm off and kill them. I think Demonic Tutor is better in more decks, but you don't really get too many opportunities to first pick a Tinker. So, ooh, Tinker plus Urza Saga is pretty fun. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to take this. I think it's more fun. And the ceiling is higher. Obviously, you would like Demonic Tutor in your Tinker deck, but I think it's, you know, it's not too big of a deal to give that up. Here I'm going to take Saga. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of artifacts, and Saga's an excellent plan B. Ooh. Now we need to make some decisions. We have Wern Power Stone Rakdos Sigma, but we also have Counterspell. And Mind's Desire, actually. So this is kind of unfortunate, because um, we obviously would want most of these. I probably should just take Counterspell. This card is going to lead to the best decks overall, and Wern Power Stone is fine. Um, it is a bit replaceable in that there's a lot of Signets floating around, but... I've passed two of them already, so we we got to be a little bit more aggressive in taking our artifacts now that we've passed a couple. Of course, we get double off color. There's Force of Negation. I think that's a little bit worse than Counterspell. Um, just costing three instead of two does matter, considering we're probably going to be the the one doing the unfair things. Kaldra Complete is fine. It's a decent tinker target, but I think I would rather just kind of Make sure I can get the cheaper artifacts now rather than later. Because um, I think the complete usually comes around. It's a good card in some decks, but it's pretty narrow. Like, you don't just put it in, like, white control or anything like that. Um. Okay, well, we have a Goblin Welder. That's interesting. You don't usually end up getting, like, I don't know, it's just very rare to have a good Goblin Welder deck. There's also Kadolfa Forge Master. This card's fine. Um, it is a bit slow. If we do get uh, Mishra's Workshop... Then this card gets a bit better because you can cast them in like turn three. Um, I'm just deciding whether I like that or the Welder more. I feel like the upside on Goblin Welder is higher. So we're going to take that. Here's a Coercive Portal. The downside of Goblin Welder is it is two colors. So we do have to keep that in mind. But Portal's a good artifact. But like if we get like Black Lotus, Lion's Eye Diamond, or even Lotus Bloom is pretty good with Goblin Welder because you can... You could just discard Lotus Bloom and then bring it back as if it was a Black Lotus. Because there's no casting involved. In fact, Lotus Bloom is pretty good with Urza Saga as well. So we will take that card fairly highly. Because there's a lot of ways to make it an effective Black Lotus. Okay, not a whole lot for us here. Um, this could be a situation where we do have to pivot. If we don't start seeing a lot of artifacts soon. Like, you need a lot of things to go right for your Tinker Counterspell deck to work. So we could pivot into like uh, blue red, you know, take Gush and be Tempo. I could take a Runaway Steamkin and pivot into Mono Red. I could take Expansion Explosion and pivot into, I guess, more blue red Tempo y. Because um, I'm not taking any of the green cards. I think green and Vintage Cube, like, I try to avoid. Um, I'm going to speculate on this Runaway Steamkin. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this pack was like the opposite of the previous pack. Uh, that's a late Grave Titan and a late Path to Exile and Vindicate. So, it feels like black-white is where we're supposed to be. Potentially maybe black-red. Um, hmm. I don't know what to do here. This is, this is a big switch, but this is the time to do it. And both of these cards are very big signals that, uh, black is open. I haven't seen much evidence that white is open, but Path to Exile is so good. I think I like Path more than Grave Titan Liliana, but, oh man. Now the question is, do we stick to our guns? Trinket Mage came around, which will again be good with Lotus Bloom and stuff. I think Academy Runes is generally not amazing. And then if we think we need to abandon everything, if this was probably a competitive draft, I think I would just take Concealed Courtyard and move into Black White. But we have a good setup, so I'm going to commit for just a little bit longer. Yeah... Black, white. I mean, Smokestack is okay with Goblin Welder. You can, like, put counters on your upkeep and then sacrifice it before you have to sacrifice anything, so your opponent just always sacrifices stuff. 
There's a land tax here with Bladehold Scarab God, but I guess we'll take... Okay, you know, Worn Power Stone coming around is a good sign. I'll take that. Um, some more black-white cards, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to play competitively, I think if you see signals like what I was seeing in the first couple packs, uh, you just go for them because you're going to get rewarded in the next couple picks. I guess I take Disenchant for the sideboard. Yeah, oh my gosh. But the the reason I didn't do it here is, I guess this is an artifact. But I think, I guess I probably want I was not playing black. Um, the reason I didn't do it here is I really want to draft this blue-red artifacts deck. It, it seems fun, and if we can maybe make it open pack two, there's a chance we'll get there. It's a lower overall chance of winning the matches, but it has a higher ceiling of drafting something sweet. Like, we all know what black-white does. Um, it's good. We would probably trophy if we switched into it there, but like, I don't know. We first picked Tinker and I just, like, this archetype is never open. Black-white is pretty much always open. And so I'm just going to see if I can force my way into there. Doing a little bit of a different drafting strategy than my normal draft was open. And I guess it'll give you a good way to compare of like, I, I almost never do this. I usually just say like, I guess it's open, I'm switching, but... We'll see how it ends up. My, my prediction is not great, but we'll find out together. Well, opening Mana Vault helps with that quite a bit. Um, the one thing that can help with this strategy of just kind of forcing is if you open power, it does make your deck just easier to work. Uh, Mana Vault just smooths a lot of things together. So that's one of the better cards we could have gotten. Mana Crypt obviously being better, but this is pretty nice. I'd like to wheel Charter Course or Solemn or Gear Hulk. Uh, Charter Course working better with Goblin Welder and things like that. I'm probably not playing the Steamkin. Okay, yeah. Not complaining about a Mox Jet. Um, Volcanic Island would be pretty nice to pick up, but... Uh, you know, Sacred Foundry or something like that wouldn't be so bad either. And We're, we're just going to take the Mox. Now we have two good targets for both Trinket Mage and Urza Saga. Um, also makes our early Tinkers easier. So now we're just looking for... Uh, tinker Payoffs. Bullets of Citadel would be nice. But we don't have any storm cards yet. Um, Inkwa Leviathan I like. I don't love Blightsteel Colossus off Tinker because if they just like have Swords to Plowshares, they, you just don't get any value. And I think they got rid of Lightning Greaves. Um, okay, we have Mind Slaver versus Coalition Relic. And to a lesser extent, Mistress Factory. Mind Slaver is kind of a win condition, but I think overall I probably want Coalition Relic more. Ooh, Mox Diamond is really good. If we can get Tolarian Academy, this is kind of exactly what we want. I like Belfal Strix. If it comes around, I'm definitely going to take it, but Mox Diamond really helps with early mana stuff. Uh, whoa, that natural order is crazy. I, I like it a lot. Um, we could take D's. Master of Death, what does this card do? 3 mana, 3 1, enters the battlefield, surveil 2. If it's in your graveyard, you can pay 1 life to return it to your hand. Kind of a weird inclusion. I think I'm just going to take Seachrome Coast. I would like to at least splash like this Path to Exile. It's a good card, so we'll take some amount of fixing. There's a Sundering Titan. Um, I love Gilded Lotus, Phyrexian Revoker. Preordain would be very good too. That's a very late Preordain, but Sundering Titan is a very good card to tinker into. Grim Monolith, Ugin, Doretti. Opposition. Do I need this Monolith? Like At this point, I have quite a bit of early mana. I guess I'll take this one, but now I can... I have quite a few things to tinker now. Um, I can start working on payoffs. And we have quite a bit of ramp too, so just taking kind of generic expensive cards might work well for the strategy, like Consecrated Sphinx would be a pretty good pickup. Things like that. Right now I'm not loving the Goblin Welder. I have no discard outlets, but we'll see. This card is very narrow. Like, when it's good, it is very good. Ooh, Bolus is Citadel. And Azorius Signet in the same pack. That's actually very frustrating. But we're going to go big. We're taking Bullets to sit it all. Um, Tropical Island Wishclaw Talisman. That can find Tinker. There's also a Seething Song. I like Wishclaw Talisman quite a bit. It's a Tinker Enabler. And it can find Tinker. Yeah, let's take that. Um, Sacred Foundry helps with the mana. Otherwise, there's Bergy. Bergy is pretty good. I don't think you can Tinker into the Horn. Because it's the backside. I could be wrong. But I think it's just... You can get the front side card. Sacred Foundry basically makes Goblin Welder easier and obviously makes Bergy easier to cast. Um, I'm going to take the Foundry, I think. There's our Mind Slaver. There's Ancestral Vision, which is pretty good with Bolus's Citadel. 
Do I even want Mind Slaver? I mean, Vision is, I guess, only good with Citadel. This deck doesn't have much card draw at all. So this would help there. Mind Slaver does just win some matchups. I'm not getting an Academy. I'm going to take the Vision. I think Mind Slaver is a little bit weak here. Um, I'll take Beanfire as a finisher, although it's not amazing. Uh, and Spring Vantage, I mean, this just helps with the, the Red Splash. I guess if Doretti comes around now, we can do something there. Wrath of God versus a Cryptozoologist. Honestly, Wrath is pretty decent here. Kitchen Finks. Uh, for the sideboard, I guess. Alright, there's our Lotus Bloom. I think, wow, this pack's really good for us. Lotus Bloom, Tundra, Tezzer the Seeker. Honestly, Mind Twist would be interesting here. Force of Will, but can I risk Lotus Bloom wheeling? So it's good with Urza Saga. Um... It's good with Goblin Welder if I end up doing that. It's good with Bolus' Citadel because you could just play it for zero. Hmm, maybe I don't need it. But it, it's so good. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't need it, but it does a lot. It also lets us cast Bolus. I'm just going to take it. Ooh, some good options here. Phyrexian Metamorph, Chrome Mox, Sheldock Isle, Consecrated Sphinx, and Blightsteel Colossus. Like I said, I don't love it, but it is a Tinker Target. I think I'm not going to prioritize it. We'll get that on the wheel, hopefully. Um, I don't know what to take. At this point, I have quite a bit of early mana. Mox Diamond, Mox Jet. Tellurian Academy is another thing I could be looking for. We have 19 playables, so... Or even less, because we have Mox Jet. So I don't think I can take a Sheldock, even though I love that card. And Chrome Mox gives us a bit too much mana. I think we're going to take this Consecrated Sphinx. Giving ourselves like our first big payoff. Um, I would like a storm card at some point. <laughs> that, that would be helpful. Here's a Demir Signet that helps with Wishclaw Talisman. I guess there's Empty the Warrens. So I can cast that off of Bullis' Citadel after I've gone off. Um, so it's Demir Signet. Wheel of Fortune is interesting. If I want to go that route, I can just like play a bunch of stuff, refill my hand. The problem is that requires red, so I could take Steam Vents and then try and wheel the Wheel of Fortune, because I guess I have Boros Signet, Coalition Relic, Mox Diamond, Lotus Bloom to help cast it. I'm going to take the wheel. I think the upside is very high for this deck. Uh, Batter Skull is interesting. Celestial Colonnade. I have all this white fixing, but I don't really need these white cards. Uh, Dig Through Time. I'm not putting too many cards into my graveyard. And then there's Expressive Iteration. If I had taken the Steam Vents... I think I would take this, but for now, I'm probably just going to take this Batter Skull. It's a good failsafe. Winter Orb, we don't have an Urza. Urza is probably the best possible card we could ask for. Um, and normally I don't love Winter Orb, but I think it's okay here. And like, there's not a whole lot else we're missing out on, except maybe Faithless Looting to go with this Goblin Welder. But like, this is literally the only card that puts things in our graveyard for Goblin Welder. Oh, the upside's higher than Winter Orb. Let's try it. Mishra's Workshop. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's got to be good enough. I mean, I love Dark Petition and things, but Workshop is so solid here. Workshop plus Lotus Bloom can just cast Bolus' Citadel. We can cast Sundering Titan way faster now. Okay, this deck's definitely shaping up. Do I have any other big artifacts? No. I don't think I want to main deck this Wrath of God. Ooh, Golos? Uh, Spellseeker cannot find Tinker, but Golos is pretty sick. Golos can find Workshop or Urza Saga. Yeah, let's definitely do that. Here's a Lodestone Golem, a Karn. Shatter Skull Smashing is okay. Um, hmm. The downside of Karn is you can't cast him off of Workshop, but his upside is really big, right? He, he just gives you Constructs. This would be much better as an Urza. Can cast a quick Lodestone. I think Karn is just a better card, as unfortunate as that reality is. There's a Tundra. Crucible of Worlds we don't have many combos with. Tezzerith the Seeker is good with Lotus Bloom. You can just minus zero to get a Bloom. Um, honestly, I could just cut the white cards. I think I have enough playables. So I don't need Tundra. Um, Metal Worker is okay. We do have Golos, Batter Skull, Sundering Titan, and to a lesser extent Consecrated Sphinx, so it can give you a ton of mana quickly, but... I think this deck probably just wants this Tezzeret. Because fetching up Lotus Bloom is really good. Ooh, Sword of Fire and Ice versus Chrome Mox. 
Normally I would go for the Chrome Box, but this deck is really, it's really hard for us to activate this. We don't have Tolerian Academy, so the early zeros aren't that important. And oddly enough, Sword of Fire and Ice is decent. Uh, here's Empty the Warrens if we want to go big off Bolas and Citadel. Otherwise, they're just Spell Pierce if we think we're going to do something like that. I think I'm going to play it safe and just take this Spell Pierce. And then just have like a good Bolas and Citadel deck. Um, given that we're finding a Colonnade... I think I can bring back Swords to Plowshares. Uh, Yorian is good with Golos. I'm just going to take Sower for more interaction. Imperial Seal. And Tame the Priest. Okay, so I think I'm bringing back Path to Exile. Because now we have just a lot of good fixing. My mana is awkward though. 29, I'll put this here. Mox Diamond and Lotus Bloom are kind of spells, so I need to make some cuts. I think I still like the Citadel. Maybe maybe Wheel of Fortune was ambitious. I mean, I could... The easy cuts here are just cutting the red cards. And then even just cutting Wishclaw Talispin. Right now I have one, two, three, four, kind of five black sources. And Tezzeret can also grab Wishclaw Talisman. So actually, because we can grab Wishclaw off Tezzeret, that seems probably worthwhile. And we want some number of black sources because there are going to be games where we are interested in hard casting Bolas of Citadel. So for now we can sideboard Thor of Temptation and then maybe just run 16 land with these. Because it is a lot of mana sources. So we bring in the workshop, colonnade, one planes. Uh, right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen blue sources. Honestly, that's probably more than enough. I just have the one path to exile, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white sources. That's plenty. So I guess I had a swamp here. Just makes it a bit more likely we can cast a bull assist citadel. Because right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six black sources. Yeah, actually, that seems okay. Um. Just the one copy of Path main deck. Yeah, I kind of like this. I'm going to try this deck. See you guys at round one. All oh, right, we're putting in Potions Master on the play. We can go... I believe turn one Coercive Portal. That's got to be good, right? Keep this hand. We can go turn one Coercive Portal. Or we can go... Let me think about this. It's got to be good to do this this cast this um because the alternative was waiting and then we could like i guess basically do the same thing so i think this is fine but homage voting carnage would be pretty bad draw counter spell and mana vault okay play blue we can workshop for mana vault and then i can cast trinket mage and grab Mox Jet or a Lotus Bloom. But I think I'm better off waiting and then just having a bunch of mana. Leonard Bellacord in my court is a portal! Unbelievable. Alright, we need white mana. Um, I guess at this point we are going to Trinket Mage for a white source. Because that card draw is really important. Not going to tap this. <laughs> um... I can Trinket Mage for Lotus Bloom and just suspend it to get things going. Yeah, alright. Because we're very far away from Mox Jet. We don't have a land to discard a Mox Diamond, so we're just going to do this and suspend it. Um, Trinket Mage can block Loon and Relic Warder. And it's not soup. Ooh, that's going to eat my Trinket Mage, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm actually kind of happy with that. Because I don't take damage in my upkeep now. And they're not doing any damage. If I can draw a land here, nice. Now I can hold up counter spell. And then once Lotus Bloom comes down, probably I'll just cast a Bolus Citadel. Obviously it depends on what my life total is at, because they are playing mono white. But they I mean they had the, the perfect answers. Relic Order into Apparition. Definitely gonna counter that one. That's a really sick curve. Alright, this goes to one. We draw a Wishclaw Talisman, which we also cannot cast. Okay, go ahead. 
And for those wondering, this can only cast artifact spells. You can't use it to activate abilities of artifact. Okay, Elspeth. Get hit for five. This comes down. This is a really weird deck, by the way. Draw Karn. I'm at 15. I mean, I don't see a world where I don't just cast Bullet Assisted at all. This has got to work out, right? We can play Urza's Saga? That's quite nice. We can cast Ancestral Vision, okay, for zero mana. I will draw three. Golos is on top. Yeah, I'll take five to play Golos. Search for a card, yes. Um, honestly, I probably just want Celestial Colonnade. And then there's a land on top. So we can cast Coalition Relic. And then I have Swords to Plowshares to deal with anything they might do. Um, I could swing at Elspeth, and I think I kind of want to. Because, like, our, we just went off. And this is why Bolas is Citadel, like, I, I kind of was off the Storm win con because we just have... You don't need Storm for this card to be good. Uh, do I Path to Exile that? I think so. I don't think I can afford to take damage. And this also gives me back Coalition Relic. So we take no damage. Uh, we can maybe even activate Golos, depending on what happens here. They flicker with their Skyclave, eating my... They can't eat Bullis' Citadel. I guess they can take Coercive Portal. Loyal Warhound, they don't get lands. Okay. I'm hoping they don't realize that they can't take uh, Bullis' Citadel, but maybe they eat Golos. No, this is four or less. Okay, they're just going to hit the portal. That's fine. There's a Saga gets the ability. So how are we going to win this game? Because we do have to deal with the Elspeth. Right? Flicker Wisp can chump block so that Elspeth stays alive. I guess I probably want to play land because I think I want to just down tick Karn for Construct. Uh, maybe. <laughs> um, cast Sword of Fire and Ice. Yeah, because I'm not using this mana for anything else. And then we can... Hmm, this is actually kind of tough. I can either play Karn... Oh, no, no, I don't know what I can do. I can play Tezzeret in Uptick, untapping Grim Monolith Coalition Relic, and then I can use Grim Monolith to activate Urza Saga. Yeah, and then if they don't kill Tezzeret, I can ultimate Tezzeret and just kill them with a bunch of 5-5s. Five fives. So let's untap... Ooh, wait, I can even attack them with Golos, right? And then untap Golos to give Vigilance? Yeah, that seems pretty good to me. Attack Elspeth with Golos Trinket Mage. She goes to one. Then we can untap Golos Grim Monolith. And we could even, <laughs> if we ever get to the point, we can use Tezzeret to untap Bolas' Citadel and go off with uh, that activated ability. Um, and then we cast turn holding up Urza's Saga. Or we can just play Karn and Downtick. Both are the same. But Karn gets just more stuff into play, so I guess I want to do this instead. Even though it's not instant speed. Because it is a 6-6. Six, six. I mean, we're definitely doing something. Are we dead? Oh my gosh, we're dead. <laughs> they, had the perfect, they had the perfect thing. Elspeth gives that flying, we take 12. Wow, alright, wow. Didn't expect that. We're definitely bringing in Wrath of God. Probably Oust. That's deeply disappointing. Mox Diamond was on top. Okay. Uh, Wrath of God for sure coming in. Oust, I think I like the disruption. Skull Pierce, they have Elspeth and Gideon. But at the same time, I have to like hold it up. So it's a bit awkward. Um, they have a lot of answers. So I think Wish Claw Talisman is a, a bit awkward as well. Let's just add a planes here, because we, we want to have enough white to reliably cast these cards. I think I am cutting spell pierce. Do I even want counter spell? Or do I just want like a sower of temptation? Honestly, probably sower is better. And then I think I like the rest. I could bring in Kitchen Finks, but that's a lot of double white. So we just run it like this. 
I can't believe they had the lethal the lethal thing. Um Alright, this is a turn one smokestack. If I want it to be. I think I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna lead on Mishra's workshop. I also have Tinker, yeah. This hand's very good. But I don't think I want to turn one smokestack because I don't have a very good follow-up. Because next turn of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Give of runes is fine. Sword of Fire and Ice. Um, so we could just play Karn. And I think at this point I probably want to just uptick Karn. Yeah, let's uptick Karn. Get more cards in play and then we can start making constructs. Door of Temptation, Grim Monolith. I like... <laughs> well, Silver's not good, but Grim Monolith will be good. And then we can play Sword of Fire and Ice here. Last turn. The next turn, I think we go... Uh, I mean, it, a lot of it depends on what they do, but we can go, like, oust, get Grim Monolith and cast it if we need more mana. I think we have quite a bit of mana. My electrician called, so... You guys saw nothing. This is like time travel. Where I was on a phone call for quite a while, and then you guys just... are in the exact same position. So really, I shouldn't even mention it, but now you know what just happened. They're exiling Honor of the Pure. Elite Spellbinder can take my Tinker or my Oust or my Smokestack. Tinker definitely makes the most sense. So I can make a Construct and equip the Sword if I draw a land. Not paying to untap this. Okay, what is with this blue mana situation? Um, I guess we... Pretty much have to uptick Karn and go for blue. Because I can't even equip the sword, right? Yeah. Oh gosh, now we get Bolus's Citadel in hand. That's not amazing. Um, I will play a smokestack. I don't think ousting this Giver of Runes is super useful for us, but we have enough useless permanence in play that we could eventually get there. Um, next turn, if Karn is still alive, we can downtick him and then get Seachrome Coast. And... Still not be able to cast Tinker because they stole it. Silver Blade. Okay, Karn goes to one. Yeah, they've had the perfect draws. I mean, this is this is Mono White at its finest, and this is why I like drafting it. Oh, they get to kill Karn. All right, well, we're in deep trouble. Um, anyway, this is why I like drafting Mono White when it's open. So we're going to do this, then put a Soot Counter. Did I not add Wrath of God? I think I did. There's our island. But we are, we are a bit away from being able to cast basically anything. Let's oust the Silverblade Paladin. And then pass turn. Because Tinker costs five. <laughs> They've literally had like the perfect card every turn. <laughs> this gives them another land to play around Smokestack better. Yikes. We might still be able to do this um, if we draw... Mana sources or something like that. So let's do this. And I think I'm just going to sacrifice this Mana Vault. Because it's doing damage to me. And then we are going to uptick. I think our best shot is just like a hard reset. Not paying there. We don't take damage because it's dead. Ooh, Boros Signet. Okay, we're getting up there. So I normally would be able to cast Tinker. But it costs 5. So I think next turn we're going to sacrifice like Sword of Fire and Ice Mishra's Workshop maybe? Although Mishra's Workshop gives me quite a bit of potential. That Warhound though was brutal. I think I do sacrifice those two because if I can draw a blue and Sword of Temptation, they're a giver. Come on! <laughs> There's so many permanents. Okay, we take four. Take three. This is really hard to say. I think it is Mishra's Workshop Sword because we want to maximize our chances of tinkering and sewering. Um, if we draw like Golos or something, I'll be a bit sad. But any blue source and we're good to go. I will uptick here because we get two more turns. I think we can maybe wipe their board and start over. Okay, Path to Exile doesn't do a whole lot. So they lose three permanents. Okay, they're going for no lands. Let's see if they attack with Give of Runes. 
they don't. So that's six, seven. All right, I guess at this point there's no point in casting Path to Exile because it just trades permanence for permanence and I just can't cast anything either. So let's sacrifice all of our things except for Smokestack. And then we're going to sacrifice Smokestack next turn. But this just kills their board. Go up, yes. Draw Wern Power Stone. Okay. We wipe their board. Hopefully they have no follow-ups. Nice. All right. Now we lose our Smokestack. Draw land. Perfect. <laughs> just as we planned it. And they have nothing. This Path to Exile is a bit awkward. And we already used our Lotus Bloom. No, we didn't. Okay. Oh my gosh. No. Land? Okay. Um, if they draw another land and they can boast, we're in deep trouble. Or they just have Kithian. Uh, we did. <laughs> we might still die after all of this, right? We go to three. There's another land. Ugh. <sighs> Okay, here's what's going to happen. We're going to Path to Exile, Usher of the Fallen. And then we're going to Sword of Temptation, Kithian. But I need to draw a land for that to happen. Yeah, they, they had it all. I think we fought pretty well. Well, the one, they have Student of Warfare. Plus level. Uh, Trinket Mage. Don't think he's a little bit too slow. Right, he can get Mox Jet. Yeah, and then they just, because they also had Student of Warfare, Trinket Mage is not enough to stabilize, because we could have chump blocked, and then we would have had enough for Sower, but GG's. Oh, they, they just had that too. Okay, well, I don't even think Sower wasn't out then. Your deck is awesome? Thank you. Just uh, some bad mana. Okay, at least they respect the deck. <laughs> it's got a lot of things going on. They just, perfect draws. Okay, I feel better about this loss. Whenever your opponent respects your deck, it's great. If, I mean, if they hadn't exiled Tinker, we would have been able to do some things. So, I'm happy with this. See you guys next round. Alright, we're playing against Blood-Soaked Champion. Bit of a disclaimer, this is like five days later or something. Life came up, so I couldn't record. So, if I seem a bit rusty, that's why. We're going to go first. Um, I really wish Mishra's Workshop could cast Karn. Um, in some matchups, this hand could be quite good. But I think I would trade any of these islands for, like, anything. Ah, this workshop is really awkward. I guess I could keep this hand and bottom the workshop. I could also keep this hand and bottom Sword of Fire and Ice. I don't think I'm mulliganing, so I'm going to keep this. Um, I guess I could also bottom the Karn. And then just hope to draw artifacts. You know what? Let's do that. I can hold up Spell Pierce. Next turn I can like set up for Path to Exile, and then if I draw a creature, I can start going off with Sword of Fire Nice. Lotus Bloom, oh, this, is this the mirror match somehow? That would be incredible. Okay, there's a Grim Monolith. That would have let me cast Karn this turn. That's okay though. We're just gonna have a bunch of mana next turn. Yeah, that would have been nice. But if I draw like Sundering Titan now, that would be quite nice. Because I could just kill both of their lands and none of mine. Do they have Lotus Bloom on two? I'll probably spell pierce whatever this is. Okay. Well, I guess I'm not piercing that. Okay, more lands. Let's play the sword now. Because if I draw, like, Golos, I would really like to be able to, like, play and equip it. I'm willing to take a couple hits off the Revoker. I think it seems pretty rough to spell pierce something like this. Yeah, we're gonna... This is like oddly the mirror match, which I never really expected to happen, but here we are. And we spell pierce that because it, it's like a permanent spell pierce, right? Everything just costs two more now. So we just gotta hope they don't go too crazy off the Lotus Bloom. And I'm saving Path to Exile for like, well, <laughs> the actual mirror match. Um, I'm saving Path to Exile for like a Worm Coil Engine or something like that. So highly regret not keeping this Karn over Sword of Fire Nice. But to be honest, I just forgot I had all these, like, castable mana cards off Mishra's Workshop. Because it's been, like, five days. One thing I never... Whoa. Red. Uh-oh. What is the best case? Ooh, I don't like that at all. Exile my Wern Power Stone. Okay. 
That means Consecrated Sphinx is still not a live draw. They have their own Grim... What is happening over here? Literally, what are the chances of getting this mirror match? I think I also have a Mox Ruby. <laughs> let, let me check, but I, I swear I do. This is getting... This is feeling really spooky. Alright, what's my best draw? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Golos, probably? Urza Saga is decent. Take an Urza Saga. I... Don't think I'm going to be fast enough to beat a Nahiri ultimate. That's a bit unfortunate. Anguished on making. Okay, there are a lot of colors. This is not the mirror match, because I'm essentially monocolored. And we're just going to take two still. But this is quite a bit of mana. Gilded Lotus, okay. They must have Emrakul. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Just a hard cast cozy. Okay, there's the worm coil. So that's going to get pathed, but I don't really want to do that right now. Because their mana is really awkward. I don't want to like take lands out of their deck. But we are going to... Do I want to main phase activate? Probably. And then equip sword here. And this makes it, like, kind of awkward for the Warm Coil Engine attack, so maybe they don't. Yeah, Urza Saga's messed up. This is a land that's just giving me two Constructs and then an Artifact. Okay, Coercive Portal is fine. If they don't Ultimate Nahiri pre-combat, then I'm probably just gonna path the Warm Coil. Okay. And then I can swing in with my Construct. I do nothing. Yeah, let's exile this. And uh, the Construct actually has protection from Nahiri, which is pretty nice. Ooh, we draw Tinker. All right, so let's activate Urza Saga. And I, I drew my only uh, blue card, so we're just going to do that. Search for an artifact. I mean, we're, we're going to Sundering Titan them, I think. Uh, Mox Jet versus Mana Vault. Actually, does Sundering Titan even do anything? I could just get Bolas' Citadel. Well, Sundering Titan kills all of those, but they would still have one, two, three, four, five mana. Let me look at what I have. We can get Golos, no. Wishclaw, no. Sundering Titan kills a bunch of lands. And then I guess if they kill it again, they lose a ton of mana as well. Bolus' Citadel has the chance of hitting Sundering Titan and really going deep that way. But I think Sundering Titan, given that it also pressures them... Yeah, I think we're just going to get Mox Chet here. And we're going to attack Nahiri with the Construct. This will hopefully free up Grim Monolith. Actually, do I want to attack Nahiri? Yes. No? They didn't ultimate Nahiri last turn, so I'm probably not dying. Just attack them. Either way, they're going to be blocking with Phyrexian Revoker. Though I don't think it mattered too much. Now we can do this. Tinker this thundering titan yeah i think that's better than bull assisted at all in this life total because it's just like pressure in play this one this one this one and this one easy <laughs> go ahead <laughs> and the sword of fire and ice protects the construct from uh nahiri's down tick so they have five mana right now they vote carnage i'm gonna vote homage Carnage would be an interesting thing to vote, but... Actually, yeah, if I vote Carnage, they go down to no permanence, and I keep all of my lands. Hmm. Okay, we can handle a Blightsteel Colossus. For now. Alice Jailer... My Sundering Titan? Okay, so they lose their planes. Yeah, they just die here. I lose an island. The thing is, Sundering Titan is going to come back. I guess that is kind of bad for me because that kills my lands. So we do block. Not trying to die over here. Yeah, I guess that was a fine attack. But it's really weird they voted Carnage. Light still goes to hand. Okay, we have Boros Signet, so let's attack them. Because we would get the Monarchy and then kill Palace Jailer. I guess they have another turn to come up with something here. And the, the Course of Portal is kind of annoying, but they only have four mana now, so 
And they cannot down tick Nihiri on the construct. They can exile the sword, I guess. Now they vote homage. Okay, I like them playing lands because it means when slash if I retake the monarch, I don't have to kill all of my own lands. Okay. I mean, they're drawing like a bajillion cards, so I don't love my chances here. Right, they're drawing two on their draw step and then one on the end step. I'm just drawing lands here, but we're going to attack their face. And if they don't have like a path to exile, we're in okay shape. Okay, we get the monarch. We can hit Nahiri. Um, or I can hit them down to 11. But I'm just going to get Sundering Titan back, and that's just going to be super lethal. So let's just hit Nahiri. You lose that, I lose one of these. I draw a Lotus Bloom, okay. I'll suspend, play land, pass turn. And I get to draw for turn. Counter spell would be amazing right now. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, Golos is good too. I wish, I mean, I wish I had him on main phase, but I think if they vote Carnage, I'm just gonna vote Carnage, right? Carnage, destroy all non-land permanents. Yeah, I'm going to vote Carnage if they do. Okay, we'll just vote Homage. I probably should have just done it that one turn. They had nothing in play, right? Like, they would have had literally nothing. And we have to remember we have this Lotus Bloom. So they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So they're still far away from Blightsteel Colossus. Okay, Karn is fine. Then they pass turn. Acceptable. Um, can I activate Golos? I need green mana to be able to activate Golos. Oh, Tezzeret's gotta be good, right? Oh, what can I grab with Tezzeret? Let me check my deck list. I think my best bet is just going for ultimates with Tezzeret. So we're going to attack. Um, 8-8 eight, eight and 7-7, seven, seven, attack you. Kind of like just attacking them with both. This just prevents like the most possible damage. Then I can Tezzeret untap the Sundering Titan Worn Power Stone or something. They pulled a 6. Then we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Tezzeret the Seeker. Untap. Thundering Titan Worn Power Stone. Then play Golos. Seems pretty good. And I'm going to get Celestial Colonnade. That way, even if they somehow manage to blow up the world with Coercive Portal, like, I don't care. Draw my own coercive portal. So if they vote Carnage, like, we're just... Uh, <laughs> I guess the scary part with Carnage is they go land balance. Let me think about this. They would have literally zero permanence. Ah, I'm gonna vote Homage. Anytime your opponent wants to do that, it's probably not great. I, the thing that scares me is they go, like, Black Lotus balance, take out my lands, and then I have nothing. Whereas now, even if they Black Lotus balance, I could just Tezzeret ultimate, and I'm just going to kill him with 5-5s. Five and it's not like they have that much mana. Karn Liberated versus Gideon Jura. Honestly, well, this is actually annoying. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can give them Karn, which is oddly enough worse than anything else. Because Gideon just upticks and then eats all the damage, whereas Karn... I don't think can save them, but those were two good hits. I really, I really wanted to vote Carnage. Okay, I actually prefer to see Karn being cast, because they have to eat Tezzeret. And then they still pretty much just die. Yeah, okay. Okay, so this is like the weird mirror match. Uh, definitely want to disenchant, if possible. Um... Sword of Fire and Ice was somewhat relevant in protecting me from Nahiri. Thundering Titan seems absurd. So let's bring in Disenchant and let's get rid of... Um, Trinket Mage grabs Mox Mana Vault. I guess I'll get rid of Trinket Mage. Oh boy. What does this hand do? Not a lot, because both of my good Tinker targets are in my hand. So I think I just have to mulligan on that principle alone. This hand's pretty good because I can put Bolas' Citadel back into my deck. And then I have Counter Spell if they do anything scary. Um, I don't think I want to like turn one Urza Saga. And I don't think they've seen Counter Spell, they've seen Spell Pierce. So I think we're going to play this hand a little bit slower because their deck seems like... I haven't seen Tinker. 
And if I just hold up Counterspell and then activate Urza Saga at end of turn, like, that seems pretty strong to me. I'll let the Signet go through. Double blue, double white. That's fine. So we do draw Mox Jet. We get a Saga. Um, I guess I'll play Mox Jet to play around Mana Leak, I guess. Seems reasonable to me. Or I guess miscalculation. Definitely have to counter that. Teferi is such a boring card. Like, he just says you don't play magic, and that's not something I'm interested in. Ooh, there's Ancestral Vision. So, they have one mana up. I mean, I can play Karn and suspend Ancestral Vision. And we're doing it in this order to play around um, Mana Tithe. And with Karn, I think I want to make a construct that pressures their Planeswalkers that they might play. So we miss out on a little bit of Urza Saga value, but I think that's okay. Okay, Revoker's gonna name Karn. Or Urza Saga. No, it's non-land. But then we get to activate Urza Saga, search up a Mana Vault, and then cast a Golos. So that seems good. Yeah, this card is so insane. Oh my gosh. Like, the more I play with it, the more ridiculous it seems. There's a Sundering Titan, which honestly we could cast pretty soon. Make a Construct. We get Mana Vault. I'm just going to cast Golos here. Search for land. Yes. I think I just get Workshop, right? One, two, three, four. I'm like really close to casting a Sundering Titan. Now I can attack them for five. So any land we can Sundering Titan. If we don't get a land, we just Wurn Power Stone. And like, you know, we have six sixes or whatever. My opponent's missing black and red mana. Gideon's probably their best play here. They kill a Construct. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Because now Gideon dies. Uh, actually, Gideon doesn't necessarily die. But if they want Gideon to survive, they have to lose their Phyrexian Revoker. Oh, Sword of Fire and Ice. That's actually quite good as well. So let's go Sword of Fire and Ice. Equip this to Golos. Okay. <laughs> they are off of it. See you guys next round. Alright, we're here playing against I Like People 1. We're on the play. And... Yeah, this is a quick Golos. Um, the question is, do I want to suspend Ancestral Vision? Or do I want to just cast Golos as quickly as possible? I think I'm going to take one turn off here. Suspend the Vision. Um, because this gets me an Ancestral Recall pretty quickly, and it, like, it's so much better on turn- Oh no, they take my Mana Vault? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I think it's still better to have this, because now I can win the Attrition War. But they just take Mana Vault and things get awkward. Yeah, okay. Um, what do we want to draw? Celestial Colonnade? Doria Signet, if that's in my deck, would be good. Consecrated Sphinx. Perfection. So if I had played Mana Vault, I would play Golos this turn, grab like Celestial Colonnade, then I would have three lands, and I would have Path to Exile available. Uh, honestly, this might end up better. Tezzeret. Go ahead. Okay. Given that there are this many colors, they're probably more of a controlling deck. Is the hope. Okay, why does everyone have so many artifacts today? Land? Okay, there's a swamp, so I can jam a Wishclaw. But I don't want to give them access to Wishclaw. So we'll wait. Um, this... So if I draw a land, I can Wishclaw... I guess I need to draw, a, like, a zero mana artifact. I can Wishclaw for Tinker and then cast Tinker. Because they get control of it right away, right? Yeah. Okay, main phase chart, of course. I think I'm getting reanimated. No? Okay. Just Grix's creature removal. All right, I mean, if I can tinker for a uh, Sundering Titan, that's going to be pretty backbreaking. Let's cast Fission. They don't have any blue mana available. Okay. Um, What do I want to do here? I go land, Trinket Mage for a Mox. 
Or I can just cast Smokestack. I like Trinket Mage for a Mox. It opens up a lot of plays next turn. Mox Jet. Um, do I want to play Mox Jet? They feel like a deck that could have Wheel of Fortune, so we're going to cast a Mox Jet here and then pass turn. And so now, as long as I don't draw a Sundering Titan for a turn, I should be okay. Um, again, they could have like Rakdos returned, which would be pretty rough, but they just did nothing last turn. Okay. Interesting. Uh, what what could they possibly have in hand? Because if I Wishclaw Talisman, they do just get my Wishclaw. I think I'm going to attack for two and see what happens there. And then... I guess I just cast Golos? It's the least... Like, it feels like they have a handful of removal spells. And if I just cast Consecrated Sphinx, they like go for the throw, that's pretty bad. But I can now just grab Urza Saga. Start going off that way. Yeah, Golos for Urza Saga is insane. Go ahead. So now even if their Ragdos return my hand, um, it's not too big of a deal. Because I have Urza Saga, I can also Wishclaw for Tinker. I just didn't want to Wishclaw when they have like 500 mana. Yeah, okay, so they just have removal, and that's perfect. And their deck is barely splashing blue for Charter Course? Okay, maybe not. Bribery would be annoying. Glendal Lynch is actually not that bad. They only have one card in hand. Like, do they want to Glendal Lynch on my Sword of Fire and Ice or something? Like, or I just play Consecrated Sphinx. Okay, we draw Seachrome Coast. So I can make constructs. I have one, two, three, four mana right now. So let's play Smokestack. See if they counter that with Glen. Nice. Um, then I get to attack for two. They have one card in hand. Like, it can't be that bad. I play land, pass turn. And honestly, like, Smokestack is going to start doing stuff. They have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 mana. So 11 mana Ulamog, I guess, is now available. Which I hope they don't have. But they're tapping mana. Okay, that's fine. It is a little bit concerning because of... Uh, now, like, Deceiver Exarch or whatever is lethal. But, yeah, I definitely cannot Wishclaw Talisman now. Um, because now they can, like, make a copy of Glenn and then have infinite triggers but if they get greedy and try and make a copy of glenn so let's let's actually put a soot counter yes hope keep step main phase Ooh, colony's pretty good so let's activate this i don't need these black mana anymore oh yeah they took mana vault so i can grab mox diamond instead of celestial colonnade that gives me six mana this turn. So then I can just cast Consecrated Sphinx. Actually, this is better. Because now... Well, is it better? <laughs> I actually don't know. I guess let's move to combat. Because if they try and make a blocker, I can just path to exile the Glen in response. And actually, I feel like I'm better off just not... Like, they're, they're going to be able to protect themselves. They have one draw step to hit Deceiver Exarch or Zealous Conscripts. I think that's fine. Because I'm pretty sure this is, like, just lethal. I draw two. Okay. Did you hit the one outer, two outer? It does not appear so, because they're taking their time, and I'm not dead in combat. Okay, so I'm probably fine. So let's add a soot counter, and I'm going to sacrifice this swamp, I think. Smokestack doing work over here. Let's go land. Uh, we'll start with a Grim Monolith. Then I will cast a Sword of Fire and Ice. I think they pretty much have to counter that. And if they tap Kiki Jiki, then they're out of blockers and they die. Yeah, they just die now. Because they can let Glenn sacrifice or sacrifice her, but they have one blocker. And if they want Sword to be countered, then they have to sacrifice Glenn twice. Oh, I see. They just countered the sword. Oh, that's clever. Um, let's just cast Tezzeret the Seeker now. If they want to counter Tezzeret, they just have no blockers and die. Yeah, okay. Okay, so they're playing Kiki stuff. 
Um, could bring in Wrath of God or Sword of Temptation. Probably Sword of Temptation is pretty fun against Kiki Jiki. So I like that. And Path to Exile seems necessary. Wish Claw Talisman seems a bit sketchy. Considering they have like Kiki combos. It's also hard to cast. So I think we're going to bring in Sailor Cut Wish Claw and run it like that. Ooh, oh my gosh, this hand. Look at this beauty. I'm going to keep this for sure. The question is, what do I do turn one? They can't even really duress me because, like, it's all golden. Um, I can cast a turn one coercive portal. I go island mana vault into grim monolith. Turn one coercive portal. Or I can just suspend Ancestral Vision and then turn to... This is probably better. We turn one, suspend Ancestral Vision. Hope nothing too crazy happens turn two. Then I can go Urza Saga Mana Vault holding up Spell Pierce. Oh, or Seachrome Coast. Um, no, this works. Yeah, wait. Because next turn I'm going to want to activate Urza Saga because I'm just going to have a bunch of tokens or whatever. So I think, I guess for this turn, we're going to go Seachrome Coast, Mana Vault. And I could just cast Coercive Portal. That's, that's probably good. And then I could just hold up Spell Pierce in the future turns. <laughs> that's about as punished as one can physically get for the play that I made. Oh my gosh. All right, well, now I know they have Dak Fade and I can be more careful. That is disgusting. Now we know. My goodness. Um, all right, well, let's go Grim Monolith into Celestial Colonnade. And the next turn I can attack Dak Fade with Colonnade. I cannot believe they had Dak Fade in there. Oh, that makes me want to vomit. Vote homage, I guess. As long as they don't play like Glenelendra this turn. I like, I love expressive iteration. It just feels so good to cast, especially if you're trying to hit land drops. Like it, it just feels like the perfect cantrip. That is actually card advantage. So next out, island. Yeah, so they have all the things they want. So turns out Spell Pierce is good against them. Okay, Boros Signet. So I can attack with Colonnade and still hold up Spell Pierce. And I, I just have to kill Dark Faden because like, what am, what is my plan to like tinker into Bullis' Citadel and then just let them steal it, right? Like I, I have to do something. Path Exile helps a little bit. So Urza Saga. Attack with Colonnade, blue, white, three colorless. Kill Dak Faden. I wish you got your artifact back after Dak Faden died, but I know that's not how that works. Boat Carnage, spite them. Okay, they only have eight cards in hand. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, well, they are in the tank for quite a while, so it can't be that amazing. Uh, if they play Glenelendra, I can Path to Exile her at end of turn. And then they're forced to use a blue mana to counter it. That's pretty good. Damnation Island. Okay, their mana is crazy. If we just get a Sundering Titan, boom, boom, boom. They have like no mana left. Chart a course. Do I spell pierce that? I think I'm unlikely to get spell pierce to do anything else. Like, this feels like. I mean, it's definitely telling them that I have spell pierce right now. I think I'm just going to counter this. I'm going to be using my mana up quite a bit next turn. And spell pierce doesn't really stop a lot of the big scary things I can do now. Okay, so let's draw our cards first. Ugh. Um, do I want to untap Mana Vault? I guess no. Ugh, okay. I mean, Mox Diamond is actually kind of good. So this becomes level 2. We can go Swamp, Mox Diamond. And now... 2, 3, 4. Um, I can hold up Celestial Colonnade or Urza Saga Activation. Both are fairly decent. But they have seven cards in hand. What's the best case scenario? They play like Consecrated Sphinx, I guess? Well, the best case is their hand is all lands. 
but that's very unlikely. So we'll see if they attack. I mean, I'd probably just go for it in block. Reducing the number of permanents they have in play makes Smokestack get better. Even if Seasoned Pyromancer does generate a bunch of tokens. Uh-oh. Okay. Recruiter's fine for now. Just Deceiver Exarch. Not gonna untap, because I'm dying to infinite damage, if anything. We're in Power Stone. Okay. Let's activate the Saga. Then we get Mox Jet. That card is actually ridiculous. And I feel like at this point I just have to cast a smokestack. And attack for seven. Because our hand is like Kiki Jiki something. Okay, they lose the recruiter, that's fine. So they end up turning Deceiver Exarch, and we just path to exile the Exarch, I suppose. They're untapping their signet. Not sure if you guys heard the doorbell ring, but my art samples are here. Um, okay, they can untap their signet. That's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let them untap their blue mana. This is a bit greedy. They voted Carnage. Okay, <laughs> they're trying to snipe me or something, I don't know. That was a bit strange. They voted Carnage? After playing Deceiver Exarch? I mean, I guess my constructs are pretty good. They're just going to go for the Kiki play. It's very weird to vote Carnage here. But maybe they have, like, also Zealous Conscripts in hand? Oh, Treachery. Okay, well, that's just going to be a 3-3 on their board. Man, I can't wait to open this art sample. Control Magic, my other construct. Okay, I mean, this is becoming more backbreaking. Take some damage. Really surprised how they're hitting double blue here. Okay, so... I think I do want to untap my Mana Vault now. One, two, three, four. Sacrifice one, then we add a Soot Counter. Draw Tezzeret the Seeker. Okay. Um, what can Tezzeret the Seeker grab? Man, if only I had that thing that can tutor up a Tinker right now. <laughs> Um, Tethered the Seeker can grab a Golos, which blocks pretty much everything. Let's do that, I guess. Oh no, he can't grab Golos. That's minus five. Uh, let me see what creatures I have. Well, they have exactly lethal, so let's try and surprise them here. Just untap Grim Monolith Matavolt. And then I have a Path Exile at the ready. Okay, they're Vampiric Tutoring. Uh, I think Kiki Jiki is now lethal. Unless they vote Carnage, but <laughs> we'll just keep alternatively voting. I like that. And then if somehow they like mess up and are less than lethal, I then have it, but I think I'm literally going to be one. Oh, are they gonna zealous conscripts my Tezzeret? Yeah. All right. And then Emblem. Okay, so they have Kiki Jiki Deceiver Exarch Zealous Conscripts. We're just dead. I'll let them have the fun though. It's really fun stealing a Planeswalker and then ultimating. And like, I had no other choice but to go for that. This game was lost when they Dak faded my Coercive Portal on turn three. That's when the game ended, essentially. So we're just gonna run it back and now learn from our mistakes that Spell Pierce on early turns is pretty important. Uh, there's the Tinker, but there's also Bullis' Citadel, but Sundering Titan is pretty good against them. I'm going to keep this hand. I don't love it. I would literally prefer to have Mulliganed and be able to put this card on the bottom than be at where I'm at right now. But, here we are. I just, I want to Bullis' Citadel more. It's like insane how little I've drawn this card. Ah, uh, Duress. Okay, they don't have Duress. Good, good. Draw Mox... Diamond. Um, yeah, I guess if I draw a land, this lets me turn three Tinker. So it's like technically better. It's just like I would Tinker for Bolas' Citadel, right? So I just don't have that option anymore. There's a land, so I can Tinker. 
right now for Sundering Titan. Kills their swamp. Then they go down some stuff. I lose a mana in the process, but it is the most aggressive play by far. Let's just do it. Because there are other options as well. Because yeah, Sunder Titan actually kills my island as well. Um, so I can grab like Golos. Actually, I kind of like this game plan. I'm going to Golos for Mishra's Workshop. We're going to Golos. Yeah, so on, if Bolas' Citadel was in my deck, I would win this game super easily, but he's not. So I can go those for Workshop, and that lets me play and equip Sword of Fire and Ice next turn, so they would need Dak Fade in specifically this turn to do something. Otherwise, I can get Urza Saga and just have, like, a generally better hand. Maybe that's better. This is less weak to Dak Fade in specifically. Because next turn, I can just play Sword of Fire and Ice. Wait a turn and then equip, or just start activating Urza Saga because they did have the red. Okay, they go recruiter, so I guess I probably want to get down Sword of Fire and Ice then, so I can like start killing their stuff because it seems like we're in a race. Ah, if only, <laughs> if only this was in my deck. Jace Vryn's Prodigy. Okay, well, Sword of Fire and Ice is pretty good against that. Batter Skull. Just cast this. They know it's coming, but. That's okay. I'm also really sad. I didn't realize Urza Saga says specifically mana cost zero or one, not mana value. So you can't get Lotus Bloom off Urza Saga like I thought you could. Okay, they chart a course. Probably looking for a duress or something, a removal spell. In hindsight, I probably should have waited on the Tinker. Um, <laughs> if I could get Sundering Titan now, it would be extraordinarily good. And by getting Golos into Urza Saga, that's basically the same as casting Trinket Mage for Mox Chet. So I think that was just a, like an aggressive misplay. Okay, they discard JVP and they're holding up Swamp Island, so potentially Power Ward kill. So if I draw a land, I can activate Urza Saga and equip the sword. Okay, I definitely did that. So I think I'm going to do that now. We grab Mox Jet. Yeah. Play land, equip sword. Hopefully don't kill it, but like I don't have anything else to do with my mana. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And we're one black source away from just hard casting Bullis' Citadel. So that's pretty good. Come on! Stop! Stop it! They take my construct. Okay. Just a 1-1. One, one. Let's go swamp into batter skull. Otherwise, I can go swamp into trinket mage for mana vault and then equip. Ah, oh, deck fading is such an it's so annoying. Um thing is I think I cut a black source from my deck too. If I play Batter Skull, they uptick Dak Faden, I attack, they chomp, and then they steal my Batter Skull with Dak Faden. But I can hold up three mana to activate and return it to hand. So I guess I play this. This also plays around treachery and control magic. So I think we're doing okay. I mean, they're definitely chump blocking, so I don't see any point in equipping the sword. Unless I think my life total is going to matter, but it probably won't. So we're probably just going to be going Trinket Mage for Mana Vault, Play Land, and Pass. Uh-oh, I don't like that. Yeah, I think I just really messed myself up by tinkering early. If, if I had Tinker still in hand, and I could just grab a Sundering Titan right now, this would be a completely different game. But I, I don't know, in my mind I was like, I have to do it as soon as possible. Okay, Duress takes the Citadel, or the port, probably the Portal. So are they going to go Duress, cast Glenelendra this turn? And then next turn they'll have enough mana for Kikijiki Zealous Conscripts? Potentially. Oh, they're just going to Deceive Rexarch, tap my Batter Skull. Oh, that's so annoying. Alright, attack Dark Faden. Okay. I can work with this so far. I don't want them to know about the last card in my hand. 
So this costs three to return? Yeah. Just play Trinket Mage. Grabbing a Mana Vault. Mm. So they can Deceiver X... Oh, they didn't even use Dark Faden. Okay, they didn't even... Yeah, if they're not using Dark Faden, then we're okay. Then we can just play Mana Vault here. And pass turn. And they probably are going to X-Arc down the Mana Vault. They don't have enough red for Kiki Jiki. Now they maybe do. Oh, they have Lotus Bloom. Yeah, they have plenty. All right, I think I die. And I actually don't know how much Thundertide would have stopped this. It would have stopped the Dark Faden nonsense, but the Lotus Bloom means they would have had at least five mana here. Yeah, all right, good games. That was really close. What was I drawing? I guess it, it never shows me, does it? Turn to game. Draw a card. Oh, it does show you. Portal Signet. So I was, I guess, a little bit away from doing stuff. Yeah, I don't know. It would have been interesting to see if I'd tinkered properly what the game would have looked like. Just unfortunate they had the Dark Fade at the key moments. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.